Okay, just gonna wait for some people to join. I apologize for anyone watching after this is um, just a pre-recording um, after it's not live because you will have to skip over some uh, just silence, not discussing or uh, discussing anything. Still waiting. Might as well see what this does. Oh, I got a viewer, okay. Um, let me just get back to my channel. Two viewers. One like already. Thank you guys. Um, so basically this one or this video is just gonna be showing off my bottle collection. Um Oh hey Bradley. Um I know I did this in the last video, but it didn't save. Um and I didn't really go into depth with uh my bottle collection. So, what would you like to see discussed first? Um, I got these and, um, I got insulators too. In my whole shelf right here. Um, anything that you see that's interesting and you want to know the story of or the age, value, how I got it, I guess. Um... I mean, I think it's only you on right now, Bradley, but, um, you've probably heard of all these. I mean, this Phillips Milk of Magnesia, um, patented in 1906. Uh, my uncle found this when he was logging. Um, I think he was either logging or he was, um... I don't even know. He might have been doing renovations on someone's house. Um, uh, Bufont Soda. I found two of those at the same dump. Um, that one's the nicer one of them, though. As you can see, it's clear. Um, Moon's Emerald Oil from Rochester, New York. Some wacky medicine bottle that they had back then. Um, circa 1920 to 1940, I think. Um, I really like the green color on this one. Um, I don't, it doesn't have a date code on it, but it does say, um, wait, hold on, I can probably stand it up. It says 1572 on it. Um, you have any clue what that means? Um, I don't. I think it's like some mold number, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I got that last year from same uncle that got me the blue milk of magnesia. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, uh, it. I th believe this one's probably one of the 1920s or 1930s ones because of how crude um, the mold design was. Like the bottom, you can see there's a lot of imperfections. Um, if I can steady the camera, it might autofocus. 
but those aren't scratches that you can see those are actually from the mold um because it's there's like not glass missing that's a scratch right there that's what or the, a scratch would look like on this those are like in from the mold the bottom is um like i said it's got 1572 on it um anything you want to see in particular i got um let's see i got more horseshoe jars i think i did all those in the last video um i got i got a giant seven up bottle i think i've showed that before i'm not sure um i'll get it anyway i'll be right back Yeah, that's it's a pretty big one. Um, I think on the back it says the size. Um, one pint, twelve fluid ounces. If I'm not mistaken, that is. I think that's twenty-eight ounces. I'm not sure. Um, but one liter is thirty-two ounces. I think. Um, this was bottled not too far from where I live. It's, well, Plattsburgh, New York. That is, I don't consider it too far because I go there a lot, but it's like 70 miles away or so, maybe 65 miles. Um, oh, man, the sun's coming in my window, and it's kind of screwing up my shot. Um, it's the Seven Bubbles variety on this, but... Um, it's, it's one of the first of the Seven Bubbles varieties that doesn't have the woman on it. Um, hold on, I can't get this to stop rolling. I don't know if you can see where it says the date code 57. Um, well, the lighting is perfect right now. It's like around the 57. Um, Dura glass bottle made by Owens, Illinois Glass Company. Um, I don't know why my phone isn't shooting in 1080p. Oh, we got another viewer. Um, for whoever just joined, I've only went through a few of my bottles. Um, but this is a, a giant 7-up bottle that I got. It's, it's over a foot tall. Um, I actually found nine of these, um, oh, thanks, Bradley. Um, I found nine of these, but, um, the rest of them ended up breaking because, um, I left them outside, and I didn't have room for them. I left them at my friend's house, and somehow they broke. I think rain got in them, and they froze or something, but, um, I managed to save this one at least. But, um, yeah. Um, fresh up with 7-Up. They didn't have as many ingredients in soda back then either, um, as they do now. Carbonated water, sugar, citric acids, sodium citrate, flavor derived from lemon and lime oils. That's it. These days you look at the back of a soda can and it's like, oh, it's a mile long list of crap they put in it. Um, but yeah, it's got the, or well, this is what I didn't, or I didn't know why it's like this. Um, I think it, the 7-Up right here is missing the red coating, um, like over the 7-Up. Uh, because I got the bo or I got smaller bottles in the same design, uh, I'll get one. It's got red over that. See, this is one of my basically my nicest Seven Ups. I have a matching set of these, um, but as you can see, it has the red over that. That one doesn't. It's probably because um, the one with the red on it is a little newer. I think it's like 
maybe eight, nine years newer, but it's the same design basically, as you can see. Um, could also be because this could be from somewhere else, I'm not sure. But this one is like mint shape. There's no imperfections whatsoever. No um, ACL gone. Um, I believe it's a 1966. I haven't looked at these in a while. Um, yeah, you can. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a 66 on it after the logo in it. That stands for the date. And it fits the time period they made these. Um, they stopped making that variety in the 70s. Um, I'm just going to get another bottle and I'll be right back. So these are more 7-ups, but these are the older variety when ACL bottles were just becoming popular. Both in relatively good shape, except this one does have some scratches. They probably could be polished up a little more. This one you can see there is dirt. I forgot to clean that. Um, Rochester, New York. I've been there before. Um, my dad used to go there a lot, too. I've never been to Brooklyn or Minola, though. This is where the other one's from. 7-Up Brooklyn Bottling Company. Um, the Rochester one is a 1952. This one is... This one, there's a, like, repunched date code. Say, if this was a coin, it'd be like a triple repunched mint mark. But as you can see, well, maybe you can't, but that blob to or to the right of the 22, a little bit above it, that is where the date code should be. From what I can make out of it, it's 1950. I see a zero at the end, but the first number is like a giant blob, and they didn't make or they didn't make this variety in 1960, and um, ones from 1940 would not generally be in this shape or um it would have um eight bubbles on it actually because at first it was eight bubbles but they removed one to match the name seven up uh one of the people at the seven up company noticed it had eight bubbles in the design and they're like why do we call it seven up if it has eight bubbles um hold on a second Um, but yeah, I mean, I like these 7-Ups. Um, I'm gonna get another bottle, I'll see what I got. Here is one beat-up Pepsi. It is one of the first single dot ones. Fortunately, this one is not a double dot, I, as much as I wish it was. Uh, down to one viewer, I see. Um, yeah, this is the only one of these style that I have with the embossing, like right here. I've found a double dot broken. I, I like, um, but uh, never got a full double dot. This is the, I didn't even find this. Someone gave this to me free. Um, that's probably because it's in such rough shape. Um, uh, or there's good news though. Uh, the annual flea market, um, is coming up in my town. Hopefully I'll, maybe I'll be able to find a double dot there. Um, if it's not too much money, I'll probably buy it. I have seen a mint condition Pepsi double dot, um, but it, it didn't have the soda in it, and it was like $30. Um, I would have paid 30 had it been filled. Um, even that's still overpriced for these, but um, it was, I mean, it was nice shape, but it wasn't worth uh, $30. 
Um, that was like two years ago at the annual flea market. Um, hopefully you will find one for a good price. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of money to spend this year on the flea market, but usually I only spend around $25, $30. I hope, I mean, I've got some nice stuff before for those prices. Um, trying to think what else do I got to show. Um, I got a lot, but I mean, there's, I don't know what in particular to show. Hey man, nice bottles. I gotta make me some next time. Or you gotta get, yeah. Um, I've been collecting bottles for seven years now. I started in, it was either 2009 or 2010. I was young back then. Um, uh, I mean, I started off bottle hunting and I was, um, I wasn't getting anything like this. Um, I'll, I'll show you what my first find basically was. Hold on a second. Down to one viewer. Um, those are my, probably my first two bottle finds right there. Uh, both 70s, no deposit. Coke one has the cap. You can read some of it. I mean, in my opinion, these are really ugly bottles right here. But, I mean, I saved them because they're big name brands. And I'd never seen them in glass before when I started. Um, these days, though, like, this Coke bottle. My oldest Coke bottle right now, um, I think is in 1926. This one's from like probably 76. Um, nothing special really except the 16 ounces are. Um, this one's a 16 ounce and these are harder to find than the 10 ounce. But in the case of these Pepsis, the 16 ounces are easier to find than the 10 ounce. Um, let me put these away and I'll get something else. I don't, or I'm trying to think, what else could I show? Um, I already showed the, a lot of my local stuff in the last video. Oh, two viewers up to two likes. Um, sorry, it's just a black screen right now, whoever joined. Um, I'm just thinking of what I could show. Speaking of old Coke bottles, like I was not too long ago, I think it was like, I think I just had that one out, um, 1944, World War II Coca-Cola, um, this is not one of the clear ones from Canada, I wish I had one of those, cause, um, for some reason in 43 or 44 in Canada, they made a ton, or not a ton, but they made some Coke bottles that ha did not have green pigment in them. That is a nice Coke bottle. I have a lot more nicer ones than this, too. Um, usually, if I see these for like a dollar, I'll pick them up. Uh, I can't remember what I paid for this. I think it, I think it was like a bundle of stuff, and it, I bought it with... Two horseshoe jars, um, a few insulators, I think. I'm not sure, to be honest. Live stream's about to hit 20 minutes. Um, hope I get some more viewers. Uh, thanks again, though, Bradley, uh, for um, watching. Uh, yeah, this is from Watertown, New York. I've been there before. It's kind of a large city i'm not gonna say too large though but i mean it's the largest city north of syracuse i guess i don't know if you know where syracuse is um let me get something else
two viewers, okay. Um, these are some Canada Dry bottles. This one, um, I don't know what was in this originally. It doesn't say. It may, there may be some missing label off the back or something. Um, hey, SJ. Um, how's it going? Um, I'm not sure what was in this bottle, actually. Uh, it could have been anything from ginger ale, club soda. Good. Uh, that's good. Um... Yeah, I don't know if it was club soda, ginger ale. Um, I'm not sure if they did orange soda. It could have been sparkling water too, but it doesn't have anything on the back, and usually these do. Um, this I know was ginger ale though. One because of the color, and it says on the back, the original pale dry ginger ale. Um, contents: 10 fluid ounces, manufactured by or by or under authority of oh wait hold on just stop focusing Canada Dry Limited Toronto Canada um says on the bottom here oh that's upside down 1964 I'm guessing that's the date code unless yeah it, there is a or it says design, design R O nineteen fifty six. I guess this was just um. Oh, sorry, I wasn't even focusing on it. All Canada Dry is going to be ginger ale. I did find one club soda bottle before though. It was labeled club soda. Um. I mean, they're more modern, I think though. I'm not sure to be honest. Um. But. I mean, my camera won't focus, but you might be able to see it. Canada Dry Limited. This one's from Montreal. Um, big Canadian city. Um, it's a really nice condition ACL bottle, but it needs to be clean still. Um, I don't know. I might end this live stream around 30 minutes or 45 I mean, that's what I said with my last one that didn't end up saving, but ended up being an hour and a half. Let me get the next bottle. Um, basically, I'm just going through my ACL collection. I actually bought this a long time ago, th um, thinking it was rare because I hadn't seen these anywhere on the internet. Um, I'm just taking a break from cleaning. I love old bottles. Yeah. Um, bottle collecting was my first collection ever. Um, so anyway, first I started finding bottles in the woods and I'd save them and then that got me into bottle collecting. Um, that was around 2010. Uh, 2011, I inherited a lot of coins and then that jump started my coin collection. Um, around 2013, I started getting insulators from my dad because, um, he found some of the blue glass ones because he works for the town electric department. And he had to change the old blue ones and he saved them. Um, and then I started stamp collecting two years ago, but I kind of drifted away from that. Anyway, though, this bottle, dairy drinks enriched with vitamin B1, invigorating... Dairy drinks. Also, you can see there's pieces of the label missing. Um, this space right here would say um, where it was manufactured. I mean, not manufactured, but bottled. You can't see it unless you go into the right light, but you can see it says, or well, I can see it says Plattsburgh, New York. So this is, this was bottled by the 7-Up Bottling Company there. Um, no longer operates. Everything is, or every, like, bottling plant in New York just about got taken over by Cicero Bottling Company, I think. Most of them shut down, but that one's a big one. Uh, you see that on all the bottles around here that, that are new. Um, I'm gonna get a local bottle in a second.
now. Oh, zero viewers. Anyone still here? Before I go to the next bottle. Um, I know sometimes it says there's people still here. Okay, you're here. Um, this is a really nice orange crush, and it's local, you can see. I live in Tupper Lake, New York. Um, bottled by Fernet Brothers. That's all that matters, LOL. Yeah, all I need is one person watching to keep it going. Um, I mean, I could even do talk with zero people on here, but um, then I'd just sound like a crazy person talking to myself. Um, you're here too, Bradley? Okay, good. I always, I always have a glitch. It'll say I have zero viewers when I'm live, but I actually have some. Um... Yeah, so anyway, this is a 1951 Orange Crush, according to the date code on the bottom. Uh, almost mint condition, except um, that side of the ACL is kind of worn away, but I think it gives the bottle character. Um, still really nice. Uh, ACL. That means applied color label. Um... They started using those around 1943, 40s, something like that. Um, I think the first ACL bottle um, of a big soda brand was 7-Up in 1939. They started using it. Um, but a lot of the Orange Crush bottles um, were clear and they didn't have the painted label until the 50s. I'll get one of the clear ones to show you. This orange crush, all or also local. I mean, I'm surprised about or of how many um, big name brands used to be bottled in my town because um, I live in a really small town. Um, the population peaked around 1960 with 10,000 people, but it's down to 3,500 these days. Um, yeah, this is orange crush patented, and I think it says on this side. Oh yeah. Patented July 20, 1920. Um, says props. Thank you, SJ. Yeah, I, I really like these two. Um, props. That is a local bottling company, so... Um, that's what tells me it's local. I got some props bottles, too. Uh, down here it says Reed, and then 22. That is the bottling company, Reed Glass Company of Rochester, New York. 22 is the year, so it's 1922. This is a really early one. Um, considering they patented this design in 1920, it had only been around two years when this was made. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's always cool to have bottles from that long ago, too. Um, it's amazing how long stuff can last. Like, I, I mean... Paper money, too, it baffles me, like, how long a piece of paper can last. Usually, I'll, or I've found a bunch of these clear ones, though, um, but they're always usually broken. Um, the ones that I have that are solid actually were given to me. Um, I'm going to get something else. I'll get some insulators. Got some dime a dozen Hemingway 42s right here. These are like the most common blue insulator you will ever see, but both of these really good shape. All of these round drip points are intact on these ones. These are like the latest ones. I'm sorry, I need to clean a bit more before it gets hot. I'll keep checking back. That's okay, SJ. Um, I understand. Um this one only imperfection is some or a chip right here i have some of those yeah i mean um these ones are really common these hemingway 42s but you got to take a close look at um like the name and there's a lot of varieties when it comes to how it's spelled because there's a lot of spelling errors that can be worth money 
um, number errors. I love them in the colors. Yeah, there's not really a lot of glass out there besides insulators that comes in this blue color. I have quite a few of those Hemingway 42s. Yeah, me too, Bradley. Um, I have four of these blue ones. Interesting, when I get home, I'll have to show you. Okay, um, how do you, or how do you think you're going to do that? Like live stream SJ or just like a video upload? Um, I do have Instagram as well. If um, my username is logan.the.collector, um, if you want to DM me on there, um, I mean, I I like these. Oh wait a minute, is this the round drip point one? Yeah, that's round drip points. I have a lot of small insulators too. Um, they're all in my windowsill. That's my favorite insulator out of my whole collection though, right there, because it's green. Um, I'll put it up here. You can see it's not blue, but it matches uh, matches this little bottle right here. Almost matches. Yeah, I bought, or this was actually, I bought this at the flea market. Um, $3 last year. I've seen these go for probably 10 on eBay. Um, well, I paid $3. The guy had this marked as, um, the guy had it marked as $12 at the flea market, too. And I offered him three for it, and he's like, sold. <laughs> I got a good deal that day. Um, I got a really nice Hemingway 9 here. This is a little small telephone insulator. Um, they only use these for rural, or like, rural telegraph and telephone. Um, like, small towns, basically, you'd see a lot of these where I live, um, back in the day. There's no scratches on this thing. It's clean. Um, all of the drip points are intact. I mean, the round drip point insulators are not as valuable with, um, complete drip points as the sharp ones. Because most of the sharp ones would bust off before, um, sometimes, like, even in the truck when they were going to install the insulators, they'd get busted. Um... But I do have one insulator with all the sharp drip points intact. It's got a big air bubble in there, too. Um, this is a Hemingway 10. As you can see, it's a pretty weird one. You could have two, two wires go through there. Um, just making sure. Do I still got some people watching? Because it still says zero. Um, and I haven't seen comments in a while. Bradley, I'm sure you're still here. Um, yep, knew it. <laughs> you know, this would be mint condition too, but I have to clean that rust out of there at some point. That indicates that this was mounted on a metal pin, um, which is kind of odd. I'm guessing this was mounted on a wooden pin, and then um, they must have reinstalled this on a metal pin as it got older. Um... My dad actually found this in the woods. He was walking along um, the electric line out um, where the power, or just before where the power stops, where the end of the line is. He was walking out because a tree fell on the wires, and uh, he stumbled on this on the ground. Um, it was, or just the blue part on the bottom, like this, was sticking out of the leaves, and he picked it up. Um, but it's a, it's a really cool insulator. Um, I got another one to match it. I mean, well, it doesn't match, but it is the same shape. At, or Whittle Tatum and Hemingway have a lot of the same molds. Um, but Whittle Tatum has a different numbering style. Uh, I bought this Hemingway 12. It's cracked, but I paid... I think I paid 5 for this, but I've, I haven't seen one of these in forever. Um, it's the first one I've seen around here. Um, I haven't even seen these at any antique stores until j just recently I saw this one. And it's the only one I've seen. Um, I know these aren't rare, but around here I don't see them. So. 
It's got two um, edges too for the wire to go through. Um, those can be called um, the patented 1893 ones because um, that's when they came out. This this has a cool story, this right here. I've only found seven insulators in my lifetime, um, like personally, that I have not either bought or had given. Um, but this thing I found in an abandoned house. Um, so anyway, like way out in the middle of nowhere, I was walking down a trail and I see this old cabin. Um, I went inside there's like cabinets um there was like an old stove in there too i found this really old shiny toaster from the 50s too but i left it because it was full of ants um there was um there's like atlas jars in there too from the 80s but t um long story short there was a bunch of these in there there was two hemingway 42s um two Hemingway 40s, this, and there was two Whittle Tatum number ones. I found these like two or three years ago, I can't remember. It is on my Instagram though, way down. Um, but all seven insulators that I found in my life, um, they were all there. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know why someone would just pick up and leave that cabin there's a ton of stuff in there but i mean a lot of it wasn't worth taking but they left it um it was like or the door had fell down um there was like a fishing pole in there too but i mean there was no line on it and the reel was gone um what else did i find in there i'm trying to think there was there was some poker chips. I don't know why. It was like someone's old hunting cabin, but it's it's been abandoned for years because the roof is caving in in one place. It's kind of like how I found that 7-Up, or the giant 7-Up. The giant 7-Up I found in an abandoned house, too. I went in there with my friend, and um, he, or he dared me to go in the cellar, and I was scared, too, because it was dark, and the stairs looked like they were going to collapse. But I went down there... Um, and it, I was so creeped out, but I saw a case of those old 7-Ups. I mean, I only managed to save one because, like I said earlier, the rest of them broke because um, they got left outside at my friend's house. I don't even know. Um, I didn't have room for them, so I said to him he could keep them or just store them there for me. But one of us forgot them outside, and they ended up broken from uh, frost. But yeah, this is a Dwight Patterns or Pattern Insulator. I really don't know the value. All I know is that there is telephone wire going out to that old cabin. Um, I'm guessing all these were just th um, thrown in the woods when they replaced the telephone line to there, and the person who had the cabin must have found them and put them there. But um. I took them because nobody's been in that cabin for at least 15 years and obviously they don't care enough since they left a ton of stuff there and it's the doors falling down the roofs caving in these would have been broken hey penguin panzer um anyway these in or this insulator and the other six of them would have been broken had i not taken them out of there i'm not gonna just let insulators break the way i am um, I mean, it's not like I'm robbing a place. Uh, it was just completely abandoned. Um, I got some more, or I got all these bottles too. If you guys see anything you, you want me to discuss, um... I, I got more insulators. Uh, local bottles are on that shelf. Um, 1940s. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that was your account. I thought, um, I subscribed to you, but you must have changed your username or something. Uh, LOL. Yeah, I got a really bad memory. I, I still remember, though, um, when you were up in Tupper, um, 
Remember you had your poutine or whatever and you were throwing the french fries at the seagulls? Um, yeah, it's one of my friends that just joined. Um, for anyone else watching. Uh, well, I got these. These are soda bottles, 1960s and older probably. I mean, the oldest one on this shelf is 1926. I can tell you that right now. Um, oldest on this is maybe 1890s. Um... This is just random stuff that I didn't have a shelf for. More insulators down here because they wouldn't fit on the top. Um, all three of these milk bottles are local. Altamont Dairy, Tupper Lake, New York. And then all this stuff down here right by the shelf on the floor are just um, random. But I found this right here. I'll take this out because it's got a unique top. Um, it's really old. I found two of these. Um, same dump. I've only ever been to one bottle dump in my life, really. Um, and I've went there like two or three times. Uh, all the stuff I found was, I'm guessing, common stuff. But, I mean, there wasn't a lot there that wasn't broken. I got these really old blob tops. These are 1890s, probably, maybe 1900s. Um, I found this, too. It's a 12-sided bottle, I think. Um, I don't even remember how many sides I counted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, I think it's 12 sides. I didn't do a very good job counting, I'm sure, though, because I was trying to record and count at the same time. But it's Moses Atwood's um, Jaundice Bitters. It, they had a lot of weird medicines back then that they said could cure everything and stuff like that. But lots of them were just lies and you drink it and it does absolutely nothing to you. Um... Just a way for them to make quick cash. But yeah, I really like this bottle too. I mean, I'm kind of disappointed it's not whole. As you can see, a piece of the top is gone. But, I mean, there's enough here that it's worth saving. Um, it was really hard to clean, but this is 1890s to um, probably the 1910s. Uh, that's one of my older finds. Like, these, these right here... Um, those are old, too, and they were at the same dump. Uh, most of these I've either bought or I've found. Or well, I'll show you the one that basically st helped start my collection, too. Um, I already showed older Pepsis. I mean, 70s ones. But this is a Pepsi. 1967, I think, this one is. Um... But I found this in 2010, long time ago now. It's like uh, seven years. Um, but this is my favorite soda bottle that I found. In fact, it's the only ACL bottle I've found. Um, for some reason, there's not a lot of them around here. You either find um, 70s garbage that's no deposit. I mean, I have a lot of those saved. Um, or you find... 1950s and older that doesn't even have the ACL labels that's just embossed um yeah I mean I got a lot of or a lot of bottles out I'm gonna have to put away um oh where is my Port Henry coke bottle I, I did a whole I did a mini series on YouTube about that it's right here I thought this thing was like um, I thought it was the jewel of my collection. I thought it, there was only 200 to 500 of these made, but, um, I heard that from someone, I can't remember who even. Um, all I know is I researched it, and it says there's still thousands of these left. Um, I mean, it's still an uncommon location, Port Henry, New York, it's a small, small town. Um... Of course, I did make these where I live, too, Tupper Lake, New York. Um, I got one of those. But, um, I it's a 
Christmas Coke. They call them that because these or this design was patented December 25th, 1923. This is from 1937, this one. Um, the date code is somewhere on the side. It's right there, but it's too small for my camera to pick up because my camera sucks on this phone. Um, I'd use my other phone, which I'm not sure even if the camera quality is that much better, but it doesn't let me live stream from my other phone. I don't know. I think it's just because my other phone is such an old model. Um, live streaming is not supported on YouTube. Um, is there anything before I kind of wrap this up? Probably it's going to be done within the next 15 minutes, but... Um, for the last 15 minutes, is there anything that you guys see that you want me to talk about? Um, there's an old beer bottle right there. Those sodas like I talked about. Just comment if you see anything that you would like me to talk about. Um, if you guys don't think of anything, then I'll probably end up showing my local stuff more. Um, sorry, the camera's shaking so much. Um... I got a lot of milk bottles, more insulators. Like I said, this is just random. Or well, this is random stuff, but it's all um 1950s and older. 1950 or 1960s and older sodas. Um most of these are name brand too. Like the there's only a few like you'll see 76 that was a knockoff of 7 up from the 70s and or I think it was like the f late 50s through early 70s they made this but as you can tell it was not that successful you don't see it anymore um this is from Oswego New York Conway's Beverages this is made in 1960 um I bought this at the flea market last year for two dollars um, I think I showed this in my, um, my last live stream, but it's the one that didn't save, uh, Dr. Pepper. I got that from a user on here called, or his username is Catman. Uh, he did a 60 subscriber giveaway and, uh, I won. Uh, I'd just like to say thanks again to him. Oh, sorry. That's a really cool bottle. What or what one were you talking about, Bradley? Like five minutes ago, I did not see what one you were talking about. Um, I had chat or I had live chat off for a little while. I don't know why. Um, so what one were you talking about? Zero viewers. Anyone still here? Okay, um, so what were you talking about? What bottle, Bradley? Um, my phone, or I almost just lost internet. That's why it might have said reconnecting for you guys. Um, were you talking about one of these? The Port Henry one? Um, I mean, I got all these too. Like, I, I already showed them. Basically, I'm just trying to get this to last for an hour, because, um, I don't know why, but it seems like I get a lot of view on videos that are that long. Um. That right there, that, oh, that's not the insulator, never mind. Um, that one that's hiding back there, I'll take that out, um. This is one of the Hemingway 40s um, that I found at the cabin with that Dwight pattern insulator. Um, these were also used on telephone. I think this was more um, heavy-duty telephone, though. Um, these are common. 1921 to, or to 1960, I want to say. Actually, you know what? I'm not sure. It's this... Cool. Oh, thanks, Bradley. Um, 
I'm not sure if this is the Hemingway insulators that they only made in 1921 or like 21 to 23. Um, I know the 42s, they made these from 1921 to 1960. It was their most popular insulator, no doubt. Probably the most popular insulator in like the history of blue glass insulators. Um, but the, these were also popular, but they made them for a much shorter time, making them less common, but still, um, they made a lot of them. They had to have made millions, but they have, they probably made a billion of these, like literally, not even over-exaggerating, but, um, 40 years of production of these, and they made lots of them each year. Um, I save all blue glass insulators though. My goal for the end of this year is to have, or was to have 50 of them. Um, I think I'm at 43 right now, including all my ceramic ones. Uh, I got one of these too. This is a weird lock high top insulator. What I read though is it's like, could be as early as 1915. I highly doubt it was for this one though. Um, my dad found this. He was all... Also working on, uh, or like the Hemingway 10 I showed earlier, he was working on power lines that were in the woods. Um, there's a lot of woods around here, um, since it's a small town and we're located right in the heart of the Adirondack Mountains. So, I mean, there's a lot of forest preserved around here. Anyway, he was walking through the woods and that was on the ground like the Hemingway 10. Um, lots of times when they disassemble old telegraph and telephone lines along railroad tracks and old roadways they throw them in the woods i mean these days or that was like probably in the 60s they did that but these days most people who disassemble them take these insulators because there's actually a market for them now um not really the common ones these things are a dime a dozen like i've said the 42s and the 40s but, um, people still sell them for, like, a dollar, and you can see fake ones on eBay. Oh, look at this, it's colored, uh, they take clear ones, and, um, they'll dye them. They'll put them in, like, red dye, and they'll, uh, superheat the glass and make it crackly, and they'll say, this is a super rare crackle glass insulator. Um, they only made so many of these, and really it's just a common 42 like this that was originally clear, and they've altered it. Um, so my advice to anyone out there that's going to buy insulators, don't buy false advertised ones on eBay. Um, I'd stick to buying just the plain blue ones. They're cool enough, and you'll know that they're not um, fake, and these go really cheap. Um, especially 42s. They make nice decorations. Um, I mean, I got these displayed on my shelf. All my glass insulators are on my shelf. Um, yeah, I'm gonna wrap up this video soon, but, um, uh, I'll keep going just in case anyone else shows up for the last six minutes. Also, just to hit the hour mark, because, um... I don't know about anyone who's still watching, but I'm a fan of like longer live streams, like hour long, um, two hours. The longest one I watched from start to end was three hours and 23 minutes. Um, I believe that was Relic Diggers um, YouTube. You got a roll of wheat pennies from SJ's Mixed Adventures. Uh, you might have saw her on here earlier. I don't know if she's still on, but she's got a really good channel. You guys should go subscribe to her. Um, you probably know too, I do a lot of shout outs for people. Like anyone I mention in my videos, I'll do a shout out for. Like um, my friend Bradley's on here. Um, my other friend was on here too. You probably saw him. His channel is Penguin. I already forgot it. Hold on, let me look. Uh, his channel is Penguin Panzer. Um, Bradley's channel is Bradley14. I have to go buy Logan Cool Livestream. That's okay. Um, I think I'm just going to end this now, too. Um, if anyone else is still watching, just comment. Um, I'll end it in 20 seconds if nobody responds. 
Um, yeah, so that's my bottle collection. Um, thank you everyone who watched uh, and gave me a like on this. Um, yeah, it's my only my second live stream. Technically my third, but my first one didn't save. Um, thank you guys too. If anyone watched that, um, hopped on my live stream coin roll hunting yesterday too. Um, thank you. Uh, I hope you guys like my channel. Uh, please subscribe. I'll probably do a 100 or 100 subscriber giveaway too. When I get a thousand followers on Instagram and a hundred or a hundred subscribers on YouTube, I'll do it. Okay, so that's the live stream, guys. Thanks.